as far as Texas and its rules, you know, I, I just go back to, you know, the food part of it, everything that's going on in the clown show that we're seeing with this, with the vaccination and everything, they're doing stuff to our food as we're distracted with this COVID narrative, you know, with the, with the type of chemicals that they're going to start allowing into our food that nobody's talking about that FDA won a lawsuit back in October about the grass rule. So they, they're introducing a thousand new chemicals into our food system that they don't have to tell us. So as they're getting that approved and then pushed through through the governments, they're able to basically, you know, here we go. We're going to introduce this new food product and it's going to be vegetable protein based on, you know, all this new technology. And, you know, that's a fake commodity that all that is, is going to continue the metabolical failure that we're going and they're going to try to claim that it's, you know, cows are bad for our environment. This is about climate change. This is about saving the planet. This is about feeding the world. That's bullshit. And we know it's bullshit. And so we're going to say it's bullshit and we're going to basically keep on saying it in the state of Texas because we do have a voice because we have some better rules and regulations. Whenever we're, if you're a processor and a rancher in the state of Texas, you got a Texas seal just like you have a USDA certification. You have a Texas certification. If you have that Texas certification in the state of Texas, you can sell your beef in the state of Texas. There are certain ways you have to sell it, but you can do it. A lot of states don't have that. And so that's why we think that you know we have to watch how they're manipulating these rules regulations across the board just not with the vaccination but what are they doing in education what are they doing in the food supply because this is a consorted effort this is this that this had nothing to do with the vaccination in the beginning this is this is something that they're going to shift into that people aren't paying attention to you know i could i can say some words like stakeholder capitalism i can say human capital bond markets i can say hedge funds i can say capture there's a lot of things that are going on that people don't even have access to understand that this is this is kind of going to keep on moving forward here and how did we get here because we got into bitcoin because bitcoin exposes the truth and that's what we're we're looking it gives us that confidence to say hey we're going to explore this now we didn't have these avenues of information if we did we didn't know how to kind of frame the thought or the research around it and so by that's why everything that we look in every direction we're saying there's an issue you know and then you know people are in the outside world the normies and all that they're going to say well y'all are just conspiracy theorists no this, these are facts now we have proof we have proof of work actually we can you know we we can validate now and we can prove to you so you know let, let's talk i'll talk to you you know you want to be in some cognitive dissonance because you're in some mass hysteria well, well let's talk and so they're not going to come talk to us they're just going to keep on echo chambers the way they do and you know people are people are trapped in ways they don't understand if they're in this mass hysteria so you know it goes deep <laughs> it goes very deep but let's talk about the children real quick okay how do you capture a children we can look at history how that is done you do it through food you do it through you know this mass mandates all this type of stuff that we lost two years of innocence in these children that had to be forced into doing something that that is it is not natural it's criminal and you know where are we going to start well we're going to start with getting these parents to understand that the food is being manipulated in ways they haven't understood but now they can't deny it so let's let's step up let's let's work together to get that education out there and so it's happening so people are very scared too it's like they they don't they don't know where to turn and I think that's why a lot of people are turning into Bitcoin. And once they turn into Bitcoin because of the money, then, you know, economics and everything, they're going to find out other ways that they can be empowered. And I think that's what we're seeing. And that's what we got to hope for. And but you can't once again, you can't put logic into this anymore as far as, you know, aunt not coming or you didn't get tested. Family members doing this, society doing this, neighbor doing this, husband, wife doing it. It's there. They're trying to divide and they're very successful on some fronts. Some fronts, people are becoming very, very uh, based in life. They're they're loving more. They're hoping more. They're innovating more and they're making changes. So, you know, there's going to be options. There's always there's a mass innovation whenever we have a type of prohibition against the human spirit and people have to have faith in that and so let's let's just you know let's keep you know keep our compasses pointing at what we're doing here is us us three men across the, the world right now and we're having a very good conversation
All right, gentlemen. Thanks so much for coming to my show. How are you guys doing? Really great to see you, both of you. Doing really good. Thanks for having us on. It's good to meet you today. Texas Slim and yep. Ben Kaufman. Yeah, thanks for having us on. All right. Uh, so listen, guys, uh, you already know each other. That's that's fantastic. And um, and by the way, uh, congratulate to both of you because you, you both have something in common. You have both been um, mentioned, shilled, or somehow discuss, uh, talked about on uh, the Joe Rogan show in one way or another, directly or indirectly. Um, I don't know whether you, uh, Ben, you remember uh, because you're the founder. I mean, I'm, I'm, hopefully I can say that you're the founder of the clown world today. And um, mm -hmm. so you've been somehow, I don't know, mentioned or retweeted by uh, by Joe Rogan. And I think it's important, you know, that you guys, you know, have a wide, you know, reach out to the audience out there. Um, you, you know, you have like different but complementary content. And Texas Slim, you know, you've been mentioned by Adam Curry just recently. It was really amazing talk, uh, uh, and I think it's 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 overdue. This topic, you know, about self sovereignty, food, uh, beef initiative, you know. So um, Ben has already been on my show a couple of times, and uh, uh, can I ask you, Texas Slim, just to give give me a, like a short introduction? Where you're from? Like, what do you do? What is the brief beef initiative? What is food intelligence? Sure. I mean, I grew up, I'm Texan. I grew up in Texas, a uh, small town, Texas boy, just your stereotypical, you know, somebody you kind of think of and the way we talk and the way we walk. But I've had a pretty interesting life. I, I spent most of my adult life and professional life in Austin, Texas. And so I started out young in technology and software and startup companies and all kinds of stuff. So my background is very big on agricultural ranching just because how I was raised. Uh, my professional life has been in technology and some form of communications apparatuses and software development uh, companies. And so there's a, there's a good mix here. I, was, I learned how to research. And so I just, I got into food a couple of years ago, looking at it a little bit closer during COVID. I knew that something was going up with, uh, you know, as far as the money, of course, as we all know this. And I, I really took a deep dive into food and then I started the food intelligence kind of narrative and, and I just started providing research. I embedded myself in a harvest company this past summer to do some, you know, interviews and see what was really going on in American Midwest in our bread basket, basically. And it's led to me to the beef initiative. And I'm in Texas. The beef industry gets, has always been under attack. It's under attack right now with price manipulations, uh, how the meat processors manipulate the market. A lot of people don't understand what's really going on in our food system. And it, it starts with the source of the seed and goes up from the ground all the way into us. And so we're, we're, we're creating an initiative that we're going to educate people on food because what we've been taught is wrong and it's a lie in a lot of different ways and so we're just going to come with truth and let people talk about the truth with food how it's processed how it's uh, the nutritional value that's been stolen the metabolical bankruptcy that we're going through as a nation and it's starting to spread across the world there's something amiss here and we're going to start talking about it and we're going to talk pre pretty loud uh, yeah, but the bottom line is to be honest with you. I mean, I'm I'm pretty envious of you guys in Texas because <laughs> I've even been talking with my girlfriend because you know I mean food uh, as you said you know uh, because of the whole you know manipulation. I mean, I just I just finished reading uh, the Fiat Standard by Safeda Namus, and in my opinion, I, I think it's an even better book. I mean, it just it just complements one another. The Bitcoin Standard, Fiat Standard, but because it comes from a different perspective, different comprehension process. And, uh, you know, what did the whole, you know, uh, scientific fraud, the, the manipulation, the corruption, the, I mean, the systemic, you know, theft that's going on, the, the systemic uh, uh, food, uh, you know, uh, manipulation. Um, so I think, you know, food, nutritious food is, is something we've, we've been so brainwashed. You know, I mean, um, you know, I, I told you I, I, I listened to one of your podcasts recently and, you um, I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot which which part who who you were talking to, and and you and you know and he was talking about like people who who are also like vegan or vegetarian now they are they're turning now to meat, finally. And I you know I used to be vegan myself for a pretty long time for like six or seven years until I don't know until about like 
many years ago. I don't know. It's like a long time ago. And it really f fucked up my health, really. Sure. Uh, the bone density, I did. I, I broke my leg totally unspec unspectacularly. I just slipped really in slow motion and just, just it just had a multi fracture. And I, I couldn't explain it why. And then I did a bone density examination. And, and, and the only reason I, and it was under, under average bone density. And so, you know, so coming back, you know, to, to food, nutritious, you know, the vitamins, the minerals, the trace elements, the amino acids, everything that you need, uh, you cannot get this from, from vegan or vegetarian food. It just, it just your old, your whole organism, your DNA, your, your, your body. It's like through, because of all your ancestors and intergenerational, you know, uh, food, uh, um, uh, process, you know, uh, like, like, um, eating, um, it 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 just um, you know um, you can't you can't just you can't you can't just say from one day to another and that's what I did the biggest mistake of my life just you know to go like total vegan of course you know it was of because of an empath empath empathy and and ethical reasons and but of course health reasons but it was all you know messed up everything that you read about it was all like manipulated afterwards you know it's easy to say that but when you can't like see through the, all the you know. Uh, all the manipulation and the fraud and the scientific fraud it, it's it's difficult so this is why you know i think it's great what you guys doing also you know there's people like untapped growth and and you mm -hmm. um so i think it's it's great you know what you guys doing and i i wish we had something like the you know so, like the infrastructure or the i don't know, the conditions and texas you know is a total different environment um it really is one thing, and, and that's why I feel fortunate to be in Texas and kind of leading this beef initiative, because we're starting with, in the state of Texas, we have different processing rules to where we can have smaller mesh micro processors for animal protein. And so by learning these rules and regulations, inspections and cost values and everything that goes into these you know, I've been able to kind of create some really good relationships with some people that have been in the business and processing animal protein in the state of Texas for a while. I think that's one of the jobs that we have is to really educate people on the on the source of your food, where the food is being processed and giving you solutions. Say we just can't come out here and just keep on complaining about about these big companies we know they're there we know the history so let's let's create plans and let's use the rules and regulations that we have right now that we know better than the government sometimes because they're they're disjointed you know they're centralized but they don't talk to each other they're compartmentalized in a way to where it makes the the processing business um very much lean to the global corporations and they have all controls over those rules and regulations we're finding out ways where we can do a process processing center in the state of Texas that you can do a cow a day or 30 cows a week. Whenever I say that, as far as harvesting your protein, that's what that is. That's not very popular to a lot of people, but it's becoming very aware. There's some, some awareness going out there and we're going to bring that. And if we can start with where the bottlenecks are with our food and then the education of how we've gotten to where we've gotten to as far as being a vegan, there's many people out there that, that, that do well being a vegan. They have to sometimes, you know, this is about nutrition when it comes down to the bottom line. You know, I'm, I'm in Texas, you know, I'm half a cowboy here. I'm talking about beef because that's how I was raised, but there's animal protein out there. There's ways to get pure nutrition. And this is what it's about. And if you had to ask my Simon Sinek moment, of why am I doing this is to save kids lives. And this is, this is getting out of control. 46% of our children, five to 11 in the United States right now is obese or overweight and they're on their way to diabetes. People need to wake up and, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a, I can talk. And so I'm going to talk a lot and I'm going to start talking louder. So, you know, I think we have a good platform to be able to do that from our stance in Texas. What's the obese rate like in general in in the in the United States? Like, is it like right more? now the forty six percent of our Jesus kids Christ. between the oh ages of five and eleven have now been reported to be either <laughs> obese or overweight? Mm -hmm. That came out during COVID, and they kind of laughed of it, said that kids are getting pudgy or something like that. It was a clown <laughs> clown word old moment that I'm sure Ben highlighted. <laughs> 
What's your perspective, Ben, on all this? I mean, what's what's your approach to food and you know, like nutrition, especially you know, uh, with people like us? Like, we have a we have a daughter. She's like one year old. It's important to me. I mean, we're ha we're having a hard time like finding like a local, you know, like in you know, it's not like Texas. You know, we can't like just go to a local ranch or a farmer. So, um, what's your approach like to to nutrition or, or food or uh, like you've been like going like flying around like you know you've been around not only in Israel but other countries. What, what, what's your what's your, what's your perception? Honestly, from my personal experience, the best thing I like the best diet that that worked for me is um, is let's say like a keto borderline um, uh, borderline yeah only meat diet. So borderline carnivore basically. Uh, it's like you know uh, when I I use like for one year. I ate almost only uh, meat, uh, fish, uh, and dairy products uh, for, I'd say, like eight months, let's say. And that's when I felt the best. It's It wasn't easy to maintain. It's still like I'm still not easy to maintain, especially now that I'm traveling way more. Uh, but I can say from a personal experience that this is when I felt the best and when I lost the most weight and like had like, really the best experience uh, in terms of that so i'm definitely i'm not a big expert on nutrition but i could say that we've been like as people we've been eating animal products for you know hundreds of thousands of years uh and i think it's pretty much clear that it's working uh and working great uh i can say i read a lot of stuff that that is very convincing for why it can why animal products are important and why it's so you know and why it's important to, to eat them and why avoid, for example, seed oils or uh, carbs or etc. But none of the reading has prepared me to like how great you, you can really feel on that. So I'd say everybody might have some slightly different diets. I know a lot of people don't eat, for example, dairy products. For me, it's, uh, it's really good for me, uh, it seems. But everyone has their own like thing, but they definitely think that avoiding animal products is, is not a good idea. That's what I would say from my perspective. Yeah, definitely. And I've changed my, my I mean, my, my eating habits and, you know, all of us, like me and my girlfriend and our daughter, it's like, I try to, you know, to give her like super organic. It's really difficult. I mean, you know, you go into the supermarket and, you know, you don't know what is really biological. There's like biological certified meat, but you don't know. There's just so much shit going on, so much fraud. <laughs> So this is why, you know, it would be so important to get our meat, whatever that is, even we, like wild meat, like deer meat or whatever, like directly from the from the hunter, from the ra ra rancher or farmer, um, because, you know, or, or be, be like liver, organs, uh, steak or bone marrow, you know, I mean, Safed and Amos and you know, the whole Bitcoin community has had a, definitely not only on me, but I think on lots of people, a lot of influence. A lot of impact and I've, I mean I've almost like become like a almost like a hundred percent carnivore I mean I, I eat maybe two eggs in the in the morning I hardly eat any bread or you know all these carp thing it just I just can't handle it uh, anymore and and I just feel great you know when I just eat meat and some I'm trying to you know to feed our daughter you know the same uh, thing you know just organic super biological organic meat and because, you know, it's these, these uh, amino acids. And, of course, you, you need to take supplements. You know, as you said, uh, Texlim, you know, it's like uh, everything, because of the monoculture, because of this whole, you know, process, it's like everything has been so depleted. You need, I, uh, Would you agree that one way or another we need to take supplements, whether it be vitamins, minerals, trace elements? I believe, you know, I had that conversation this morning with the doctor, actually, and we were talking about this, about, you know, just nutrition and where, where do we start, you know, as far as getting those, those micro, you know, nutrients that we need again. And there's a phase approach. He was, cause he, he's, he's basically in the medical field and he, he's having to transition into a new way of, you know, communication to his patients and everything. And he, he, he brought up a good point. This is a transitional thing that's happening. If you have become aware of kind of where our food has come from, where it's going and the lack of nutritional value, if you're on prescriptions, you're going to shoot for getting on, um, you know, vitamins and minerals. And if you're on vitamins and minerals, you're going to look harder on how can I transition into 
pure animal protein and nutrition in a way that is consistent and I won't need those vitamins and minerals. All of this is an evolution that happens in every individual, just like Ben said, we're all going to have different habits. We're going to have different opportunities, limitations. And so I usually tell people, let's get to the source of the seed of all of this. Let's start from the ground up. And once we can dissect all this together as a community, as we do pretty well as a Bitcoin community, you know, we, we do crowdsource a lot of information and there's very valuable information that everybody's giving. If we start now with the source of the seed, we'll, we'll go through that process together to where we'll be pretty bulletproof as far as being able to answer these questions from the naysayers. And if somebody says, hey, should I be on these vitamins and minerals? We can say, well, you know, what is your diet? What is your intake? What is your sourcing? Where are you getting your, you know, I always like to really look at that bread. It's not bread as bad. It's like, where did that bread come from? You know, if I'm in a, if I'm in a village somewhere, you know, that's, that is lived off that bread for 200 years, I'm going to eat that damn bread. If I'm going to a supermarket and that thing has been overly processed and bleached so many times, exactly. I'm not getting close to yeah. it. It's just sugar. Yeah. So it, once again, there's, there's the food intelligence that we need to bring and you know vitamins and minerals will be a part of that and you would hope to strive that you don't have to be in the long run if you need to be that's fine you'll figure that out yeah especially you know when you know where the ingredients you know as you said the sure. seed uh, the, <laughs> the the root of the whole you yeah. know of what it, even the bread i mean of course i eat bread i love bread you know if, it, if it's really like like you know where it's coming from you you made whatever like a sourdough like a pizza you know, something like that like self-made stuff where you know where, where the ingredients come from how you how you do this and so everything you know you buy in the supermarket or whatever in the grocery shop it you don't know where it's coming from you know you don't know how they did it uh has it been is it depleted you know from minerals some uh, yeah, or, or any other you know essential nutrients it's 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 real difficult um uh, i was gonna ask ben uh, yeah ben would you uh just generally just like from your feeling would you would you ever um consider moving to texas um probably not as long as it's part of the u.s union uh it's pretty bad like politics <laughs> uh also it's really hot there like really i mean i've i've got to admit i've been there in the summer so maybe it's better like another time of the year but when i was there it was man i could <laughs> i'm from israel it's hot there as well but that was a different level i didn't so know that really. really is it that hot i thought you know yeah. maybe in the summer at least it was really that hot like it depends on the part of texas yeah. that you're in um i live in the desert high plains which is on top of texas it's called the yano estacado it, it'll 100 110 in the and you know as far as Fahrenheit. And so, yeah, it gets hot. It's not as human. You go down to places like over to Dallas or Austin and you go down to Del Rio, you get some, yeah, you get pretty hot and humid. Texas, is, it, it can bake in the summertime. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that was my, my experience. But overall, it's pretty nice. I mean, I've got to admit, I've had there the best uh, beef brisket um, I've had in Texas, this I can say for sure. Never had one that good anywhere else. Um, and yeah, I love like the, the local state politics is really good. But as part of the union, it's it's a problem in itself, I would say, the larger politic uh, scheme. And it's just really hot. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just Valid asking. points. Yeah. <laughs> Because I've heard, you know, so much good stuff. I've never been to Texas. I've, I've lived like five years in California. I'm used and I love the hot weather or warm climate or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but other than that, I'm, I'm not sure, you know, how life would be. I, mean, I just heard so much good stuff, you know, about Austin. I mean, I don't know what, why. Is it because so it's so, you know, it's like live and let live? Is it this, this, is this the attitude? Well, I well, Austin, basically, you know, Austin is its original name of Austin. It was called Waterloo. A lot of people don't know that about Austin. You know, there's a, there's a river there. There's lakes, there's streams, there's uh, springs. You know, Texas has a lot of rivers. It's Austin is the foot of the hill country, which is actually really 
pretty beautiful. You can get lost back up in there. So Austin's just, it is, it's grown. It's become international. Used to, it was kind of an oasis. And most of the time that I was there, it was during the startup days of technology. So it was fun. It was, it's a different city now. And so it's, it's growing, it's going to grow very big. And, you know, there's a lot of fantastic things in Austin and I'll be the first to say i'm not in austin anymore for a reason but you know i i I came from small town so as i get older the cities just aren't that desirable as much so austin's a beautiful place and there's a there's a community in austin that's just very connected right now and that's cool to see and you know houston dallas san antonio all these places have their special spots you know in the state of texas so texas is big it's vast uh it's got some bad political ties with the federal government but it also has some very strong state um regulations and laws that we have a chance to kind of you know help control especially in the food industry and uh so ben is exactly right in his assessment on both of them so you know there's there's things that fit and there's things that don't right now and i think we're as a state we're in transformation as well Mm -hmm. yeah um, you know, the, the reason I'm asking because, you know, we, we're thinking, as you know, today, uh, the, these corrupt criminal, I'm sorry, to, you know, it just, no, it, I don't have to apologize, but it just, it just, the whole, the whole system is so corrupt. It's, sure. it's really we fucked up. This. It's really fucked yeah. up. They decided on this new law that's going to take effect in February with mandatory vaccination, and you could get, you know, penalized up to, I don't know, thousands and thousands of, of euros. And so we're going to take legal action. I myself in a group trying, you know, to we're going to take a lot of legal measures, legal action, uh, and and go to the you know constitutional court and everything else. And but but long term, we're thinking like, what would what are we going to do? Like, are we going to stay here? I mean, uh, especially because of our daughter. Like, what can, what kind of environment do we want her, you know, to to grow up with? And 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 so uh, you know, we're thinking, of course, you know, about. El Salvador and Paraguay, Mexico and and Texas, but but you know, I mean, for now it's not even realistic because you need uh, what I I mean if if it's still valid uh, this this law that you ca- you can't enter right as a foreigner you can't even enter without being uh, vaccinated right I mean wouldn't mm-hmm. be possible so whatever. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's it's there. Ever you know, I have friends in Australia. I have friends in the UK. I have friends in Paris. I have friends in Asia. You know, and everybody's got a different story right now. And I think that's just part of the narrative. They're going to cause a lot of confusion because now that WHO is saying, hey, we're going to lift all travel, international travel re- requirements and all that. Then you have Australia locking down even harder. Then you have UK saying, hey, this and this is by design and it's going to cause a lot of confusion because people are going to try to use logic. And what they're doing is they're not going to allow logic into this conversation right now. And we'll see how this plays out. And every one of my friends that I know in different countries are saying the different things. So they're having to, they're having to try to bring logic into something that they don't know how to plan because like you, you would not be able to fly in the United States right now if you're not vaccinated. Are we going to lift that? Let's see. We'll see what happens in the next 10 days. Ben has probably, you know, faced it more than anybody that I've, you know, kind of associated because of his travels. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I've been traveling a lot here. Um, there's, it's traveling right now is getting just harder and harder. Like really every country is adding like a vaccine mandate or, um, or a vaccine like, uh, you know, or a quarantine or vaccine option or anything like that. Or they're just adding some uh, vaccine passports. Uh, it just really, it's the travel has been getting like, it was not too bad, I would say, about a year or half a year ago, let's say half a year ago. But in the past few months, it's really getting bad. Um, really, the, the countries that you can go in is really getting smaller and smaller. Um, you could say that. Pretty much most of Europe, uh, Israel is for for most. I think is Israel already banned and like unvaccinated. Well, um, citizen, but uh, non-citizens, for example, um, the U.S., um, even some countries, I think, in Latin America and um, Asia, I think as well. A few countries, Australia, of course. So really, travel is is getting pretty hard. I'd say. 
Um, it's not impossible, but it's it's getting very difficult. Theoretically, uh, Ben, uh, because I think it was Max, what's his name, Max, you know, the German uh, guy, Max, uh, I forgot his last name. Anyway, um, so mm -hmm. he he tweeted something about like private charter, like, like like private jet. I mean, I don't know, you know, it's just like so fucking expensive, but would it be different if you like, theoretically, if you could, uh, let's say with a reasonable price, charter a private jet and fly somewhere, would it be like the same restrictions, same, you know, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure the same restrictions will apply because it's not really the... So the thing is, you would probably be able to fly without a mask on, which is already mm. a huge win. But besides, it's I'm pretty sure the restrictions are still there. Okay. I, I was talking to somebody the other day, and they were talking about aviation itself. We were talking about a Bitcoin airline. You know, there's something that we should probably look into and diving into it. You know, mm -hmm. usually if you own a charter up plane and you own like so let's just say 10 bitcoiners got together and you know bought a jet and that we could charter it out you well you 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 have a pilot you know you have all that but that's a company that you use and that if that company is going to fly you around charter you around schedule it when you're not using it everything they have to follow federal rules and regulations yeah. and so that's how the federal government is is able to control and trap certain industries and limit travel still our personal space you know and in that way it was funny whenever i was in north dakota uh, you know i went out to some ranchers and people that did grass-fed beef and everything so i could source some protein when i was there they were up against the same type of scenario here they are in the middle of north dakota in nowhere they're grass-fed beef but they have the usda stamp that they have to abide by to sell their beef well they were getting enforced on the mass mandate everything if they slipped up at all with these mandates and everything the federal government can shut them down because of covid it wasn't anything to do with beef it was nothing to do with food it was nothing to do with safety sanitation nutrition nothing it had to do with them being able to have the power to shut them down you see that in the private airline industry too so you know there's there's things that we have to look at as bitcoiners and start approaching it from a different perspective just like you said because we're what we're doing is we know that there's restrictions we have to build around those restrictions with a parallel train of thought to start off with and that's what we're doing um let me come back yeah to this whole tyranny ben i want to know you this is why i wanted to have on like what, what is it like how fucked up is is everything right now i mean uh, what is the narrative crumbling do you think because you know israel the, the even the what do you call it the chief medical vaccine scientist mm -hmm. whatever uh, he he's like oh we made some mistakes i mean at the end he sounds like a politician to be honest with you but i mean he does admit you know they they screwed up and they didn't know you know it does not protect from transmission and and now you see all these adverse reactions totally underreported of course the death rate is off the off the chart and you can just literally see the curve uh, like the the graphs you know where they when they start when they start every time they start with the vaccination that the uh the the more it goes like uh you know through the roof uh, what's your like you know comprehensive like you know perspective on this whole mm -hmm. i'll just definitely say that we're in a total clown world i mean there's no other way to to call it it's it's everything is just ridiculous right now like they're making rules that don't make any sense they've admitted in israel for example they've admitted and even like got uh, an approval from their like um the general attorney of the uh, attorney advisor for the government that they can mandate like um, restrictions on unvaccinated people that do not like try to attempt to stop the spread in any way just as a punitive measure to, the, to punish unvaccinated people, uh, for example. Uh, and that's true for many places of the world, uh, whatever they admit it or not, Israel, for example, have admitted it. Uh, but even if they don't, that's that's still true. I mean, we can see that vaccinated people are still spreading COVID. Um, it was like a conspiracy theory to say that, but now even the, the mainstream media is saying this loud and clear. The CDC is saying that. Uh, it's, it's just, it's happening. And, you know, People didn't want to believe this at first, but we can just see that how the narrative is just changing now around it. Uh, and still, this is like the only thing that they're focusing on. Their their rules don't really try to to basically to adapt to this to this understanding, even though they are now admitting it. 
they're just okay so the vaccination isn't stopping the spread so we still need vaccine passports we still need more you know more uh, restrictions on the unvaccinated and whatever why uh because we want more people to get vaccinated but there's no really you know nothing's backing this really anymore uh no they don't really have their claims anymore that it will stop the spread that it will stop transmissions that it will prevent you from contracting it or spreading it or getting uh, seriously ill even it's just you know they're just trying to to continue with this with their narrative of the vaccination because they've already started with it so hard Yeah, it's it's mind boggling. Um, uh, so Texas Slim, you know, I mean, there are just a couple of states, right? I mean, it's like Texas, Florida, Wyoming. They are like standing up to this whole because, you know, it's a it's a because they're the states which have, you know, have, let's say, a more balanced, uh, you know, contra what do you call it? Like a power versus the federal, uh, you know, the federal mm -hmm. government. Like what what is it like in Texas? Is it? Uh, it's different all over. I mean, you get into certain cities and you're going to have, you know, the effects of maybe you would have out in a different state that is Texas. You know, there's certain parts of Texas that basically are, you know, abiding for a lot of things. And, you know, they, they look at the federal government maybe more than they do the state government. But overall, you know, I've been very fortunate in the part of Texas I'm in. I haven't seen much of it. You know, it's there. <laughs> For sure. You know, you see it, but if, if you don't want to participate, you're not having to do that. So I feel very lucky on that. I haven't been stressed about this. It's been a time for innovation for me. It's been a time for opportunity because it's opened up a lot. As far as Texas and its rules, you know, I, I just go back to, you know, the food part of it. Everything that's going on in the clown show that we're seeing with this, with the vaccination and everything, they're doing stuff to our food as we're distracted with this COVID narrative, you know, with the, with the type of chemicals that they're going to start allowing into our food that nobody's talking about that FDA won a lawsuit back in October about the grass rule. So they, they're introducing a thousand new chemicals into our food system that they don't have to tell us. So as they're getting that approved and then pushed through through the governments, they're able to basically, you know, here we go. We're going to introduce this new food product and it's going to be vegetable protein based on, you know, all this new technology. And, you know, that's a fake commodity that all that is, is going to continue the metabolical failure that we're going and they're going to try to claim that it's, you know, cows are bad for our environment. This is about climate change. This is about saving the planet. This is about feeding the world. That's bullshit. And we know it's bullshit. And so we're going to say it's bullshit and we're going to basically keep on saying it in the state of Texas because we do have a voice because we have some better rules and regulations. Whenever we are, if you're a processor and a rancher in the state of Texas, you got a Texas seal just like you have a USDA certification. You have a Texas certification. If you have that Texas certification in the state of Texas, you can sell your beef in the state of Texas. There are certain ways you have to sell it, but you can do it. A lot of states don't have that. And so that's why we think that, you know, we have to watch how they're manipulating these rules, regulations across the board, just not with the vaccination. But what are they doing in education? What are they doing in the food supply? Because this is a consorted effort. This is this that this had nothing to do with the vaccination in the beginning. This is this is something that they're going to shift into that people aren't paying attention to. Exactly. You know, I could I can say some words like stakeholder capitalism. Yeah. I can say human capital the bond markets. I can say hedge funds. I can say capture. There's a lot of things that are going on that people don't even have access to understand that this is this is kind of going to keep on moving forward here. Yeah. And on top of that, uh, we have this mass formation psychosis. Mm -hmm. The thesis is my mass formation of Professor Desmond, who's always been, you know, in that in that same podcast where you remember mentioned with Adam Curry. Right. Uh, he he clarified. I, I think it was a good. He did a good job. Uh, Adam Carey. You know, he, he sort of clarified what what mass formation really is and the conditions again. You know, to to, to make people understand. So this is on top of that. You know. Yes. Uh, additionally, you know, uh, this is why I think the the book of Sophia and Moose really is one of the best best books to be honest with written just to understand like the root causes. You know, it yes. goes into everything as you just said. You know, education 
science, uh, the peer review, this you know, stupid peer review pro I mean, it's all, it's like a huge fraud, you know, it's like a systemic fraud going on everywhere. This corruption, theft, manipulation, poisoning, it's, it's, it's mind boggling, really. It really, and, and how did we get here? Because we got into Bitcoin, because Bitcoin exposes the truth. And that's what we're, we're looking. It gives us that confidence to say, hey, we're going to explore this now. We didn't have these avenues of information. If we did, we didn't know how to kind of frame the thought or the research around it. And so by that's why everything that we look in every direction, we're saying there's an issue, you know, and then, you know, people are in the outside world, the normies and all that. They're going to say, well, y'all are just conspiracy theorists. No, this, these are facts now. We have proof. We have proof of work, actually. We can, you know, we've, we can validate now and we can prove to you. So, you know, let, let's talk. I'll talk to you. You know, you want to be in some cognitive dissonance because you're in some mass hysteria. Well, well, let's talk. And so they're not going to come talk to us. They're just going to keep on echo chamber is the way they do. And, you know, people are people are trapped in ways they don't understand if they're in this mass hysteria. So, you know, it goes deep. <laughs> it goes very deep. But let's talk about the children real quick. OK, how do you capture a children? We can look at history, how that is done. You do it through food. You do it through, you know, this mass mandates, all this type of stuff that we lost two years of innocence in these children that had to be forced into doing something that that is it is not natural it's criminal and you know where are we going to start well we're going to start with getting these parents to understand that the food is being manipulated in ways they haven't understood but now they can't deny it so let's let's step up let's let's work together to get that education out there yeah this is this is you know the what makes it really sad it's it's like you know we, we i mean you we all know people around around ourselves whether it be friends families or you know uh alleged friends it's i mean we lost a lot of people to be honest with you i mean in you know in relationships sort of as a friendship or you know or family it's 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 mind-boggling you know uh and and you know you have to tell people you have to like tell you know the one auntie you know please don't come with your mask on no we're not going to do a test if you're kind of coming to our daughter's birthday party we don't we're not going to do any kind of testing we're not going to put on mask it's it's it's, it's, it's so i don't know i don't know what to say to be honest with you because uh i mean as you said you know the the damages that have been incurred on these children emotionally psychological i mean we can't even assess that for generations mm. to come not not, not to mention the vaccines that there are people lining up voluntarily this is what's really driving me crazy there's even a pediatrician uh, what do you call it like a children's doctor you know uh, pediatrician uh, nutrition or whatever you know it's uh, vaccinating her, her seven-year-old kid i mean for christ's sake a kid a child jesus christ <laughs> i know you know and and we're talking about doctors who should know better you know about like innate immune system you know so i don't know well, and that's the form of it. I mean, we're in a cognitive dissonance that nobody wants to admit. And people, people are realizing and said, hey, maybe what I was, I trained all my life. I had a doctor come out and tell me the other day. And they said, you know, my whole life was medical. Everything that I've ever done in my life was medical. I'm having to deal with that now because I got blackballed out of something that I was very proud of and that had a very good practice. And chose to speak up and, you know, of course was run out of town. And so it, it's happening. So people are very scared too. It's like, they, they don't, they don't know where to turn. And I think that's why a lot of people are turning into Bitcoin. And once they turn into Bitcoin because of the money, then, you know, economics and everything, they're going to find out other ways that they can be empowered. And I think that's what we're seeing. And that's what we got to hope for. And, but you can't, once again, you can't put logic into this anymore as far as, you know, aunt not coming or you didn't get tested, family members doing this, society doing this, neighbor doing this, husband, wife doing it. It's there. They're trying to divide and they're very successful on some fronts. Some fronts, people are becoming very, very uh, based in life. They're, they're loving more. They're hoping more. They're innovating more and they're making changes. So, you know, there's going to be options. There's always, there's a mass innovation whenever we have a type of prohibition against the human spirit and people have to have faith in that and so let's let's just you know let's keep you know keep our compasses pointing at what we're doing here is us us three men across the, the world right now and we're having a very good conversation yeah we're really grateful for your you know positive uh 
optimistic, realistic, you know, assessment of this whole situation and the solutions, you know. Again, I mean, we agree, okay, Bitcoin is the root solution, but Ben, I want to ask you, like, um, when it comes, like, to, uh, you know, to how do you, how do you communicate? How do you try, to, you know, to open up the hearts, the minds, like, to make people understand? How do you, how do you experience this, you know, when you, like, tweet something out or, or, or post something or write something, like, in a more humorous or meme-like fashion? What is your... Like, what is your feeling? Like, wh how is it being received? Like, how? What's the reaction? Do you see? Like, I mean, it's 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 uh, congratulations again. You have so many followers. And I'm so happy for you that you have like I don't know, uh, like at least hundred thousand followers or on Clown World. So, w w how do you see the psychology going? Is it like opening up people, like people who are like on the on the you know mass formation side and now coming? and opening up their hearts and minds and try, you know at least trying to understand what's what's your what's your perception here mm -hmm. yeah i think well there's always people that are just hopeless but there are a lot of people that are kind of on the like on the edge and are like not sure or stuff like that and i do think it helped convincing a lot of people I get a lot of feedback like of people that have shown this to their family or friends or something and it really helped convince them. Uh, and I really, I really love seeing that because that's, that's really a big part of what I'm doing, why I'm doing this. Um, I mean, it's, it's really, there are a lot of people who, you know, who are kind of going on with this thing because they are told to, because they, you know, that they, they are required to sometimes, but they are not really convinced by it. And when they see like all this, all this nonsense, when you show them that all of this is just nonsense like this, they, they really like, they can, they are not stupid or something. They can understand that this is wrong, that this is okay. This doesn't make sense anymore. Uh, it just, you know, uh, it just doesn't make any sense like at all. Uh, we should not be following this, this, we should not, you know, this, this is just stupid basically. Um, and yeah, so I really think we can, a lot of people can, can be convinced, really. That's a good point. I mean, as far as, you know, Ben and I talked before and I asked him kind of a complicated question and it's like, how did you do all this and get all these followers, right? Well, Ben had a very good uh, answer. He goes, it's very simple. I just retweet what the what, what the hell's going on in the world and people are you know paying attention so in in with everything that we're up against and that's what you know that day that's been about a month i don't know six weeks ago that we had that conversation but it, it's true we got to get simplified here in our train of thought and you know how they've gotten to where they've gotten was a drip approach and I always say we kind of, kind of counter punch back at them as they drip out something, we drip out something and we have to start mocking the whole idea of what's going on in a way that we can, especially, you know, the people that are in Bitcoin, there's a lot of effective mean people out there. We'll just say that. And, uh, so, you know, what Ben has done has been very effective and I think it's going to get more and more and to break, I, I think it was Adam that told me to break mass, you know, hysteria formation. You need to mock them. And I think, was it in Austria where they were holding up the mirrors to all the, the enforcement, the police and everything and all the protest yeah, protesters be, yeah. had, yeah, they had, but they Germany? said, look at, yeah. yeah, it was, it was somewhere over, you know, in that part, I, I think it was Austria, but anyways, holding up the mirrors in front of the police officers that were trying to enforce them to whatever the, the compliance of the day and make them look at the, themselves in the mirror. And, you know, here in the Bitcoin world, we're willing to look in the mirror and say, let's, let's do something about this. I think that we, we will gain a lot more because truth wins and we're going to have some, uh, you know, some short term battles here, but I think this narrative will fall in. That's why I'm so optimistic because I see a lot of good that I didn't see before. And it's been because of this type of psychological warfare that's being played against us. Yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah, I think you, you're so right. You, you both are right. It's, it's, um, you, you people are so indoctrinated i don't know what would you call it, hypnotized it's uh, it needs something like sort of a, a trigger or some some kind of incentive i don't know what to call it like a something to re self-reflect uh you know and i think humor laughter is 
has always been one of the best tools. Sure. You know, whether it be clownery or you know mimicking or mocking or whatever that is, you know, or imitating or just you know stand-up comedian. And I think that's why, to be honest with Ben, I think that's why Joe Rogan loves your you know your stuff. I mean, he um, at least I mean I saw him like once or twice like retweeting your stuff, you know, from uh, Clown World. So it's you just a matter of time till you you know maybe you you both you know gonna be on his show. That would be awesome. <laughs> Well, hopefully people would hear I, that, you know. I would hope, really hope one day, but yeah, I mean, he's re just retweeted my, my, my stuff a few times, so it was really good. I'm really happy about it. And in general, I think it's just, yeah, I think I definitely agree that mocking them and like just showing them how ridiculous stuff is, is, you know, is, is pretty effective. Yeah. So, you know, for this transition, um, I'm still convinced, you know, uh, that, uh, you know, I'm a good friend of, of Peter Young, who also works for the Free Private Cities, and you might have known, he also works for Safeda and Amuse in the background. And um, I'm going to talk to him pretty soon. Again, he was just on the Stephen Libera podcast, I think, giving sort of a comprehensive summary of what's, what's been going on with the pre for Free Private Cities, also in Honduras, El Salvador, and everywhere else, it's Mexico. And to be honest with you, I mean, to, I think the most effective solution is now to form whatever we would call it, free private cities, um, citadels, communities, um, wherever that is, would it be El Salvador or Mexico, Paraguay, or in countries, you know, where you have just more freedom and where you can sort of, you know, uh, establish your own um, structures um, where, you know, you pay like a, a fee, uh, <laughs> per year and you get uh, this is what the government should be doing you know like <laughs> just just providing services right and right. so and where you have sort of a contractual relationship and uh, you have rights and obligations and uh, but you are free finally you know and there is no mandatory you know stupid things going on or um uh, or, you know tyr tyranny or or any any other you know authoritarian regimes um you just have a it's a uh, and in, in all, everything rooted in Bitcoin, of course, uh, and the deflationary currency. And Jeff Booth, you know, is a you know I'm a huge fan of Jeff Booth, where we finally see products and services getting cheaper and cheaper, where infrastructure is being built, entrepreneurs coming into the you know into these free private cities, investing, building up. And I'm hoping, you know, in the next couple of years, that the Bitcoin city in El Salvador, whatever that whatever it's called, is going to flourish and thrive. Well, what's your, what's your take on that, both of you? Uh, takes a slim life. Yeah, the one you know, I've been really thinking about this because you know, being from a small town in Texas, there's community and everything, and you know, there has to be a form of collectivism for the community to to work. Right. One thing that a lot of people I think we need to do is kind of dissect what a community is. Well you can't have community unless you have a strong individual. And I think that's where we start with all of this because we are, we look at, we project pretty far. We're very good at doing that. And with doing, you know, what I'm doing, I want to look at the individual as I say, with a form of collective collectivism that, you know, you, you can grab a hold of that's going to make your life better to where you can get that information and that intelligence to where we can go do El Salvador or what we can do down here in, you know, in, in Texas, where I'm from, there's a lot of small towns that need to be revitalized. I'm working with some community programs in Texas. One of them is called the Ogallala Commons. I have my local beef producer. He's, he's been in that for a long time, and they're helping build communities. And so small communities that used to be, you know, they used to thrive because of agriculture, because of ranching. And so what we can go in there and do is create that citadel mindset in these communities saying, we're going to steal back what you stole from our grandparents because they developed this stuff and it was working pretty damn good from the food to the banking to anything they had a decentralized way of living their life because their food was from their neighbor or from themselves and so we don't have to just all you know forget that you know we have solutions right in front of us and we have to take that drip approach of saying let's get to the individual back to being strong again powerful in ways that of mental, emotional, physically, spiritually, whatever it is, 
if we do that, everything else falls into place because we know what the destination is. We know what we're striving for. So let's, let's really throw some love and some power and some personal strength into this to where we can build those communities. You don't have to define that community yet. Define yourself first. Totally agree with you. Yeah. Do you have children, by the way? Uh, tech, uh... I do. I have a, a 17 year old boy. Okay. Um, and uh, he, he's 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 doing very well in life, and I'm very proud of him. He he's he's athletic. He's he's in the weight room. He's eating protein. He's curious. He likes himself. He's not wearing a mask. Wow. You know, he's having a damn good life right now, and he's growing. Yeah. And there's a lot of kids out there that are not allowing themselves or this society this you know per, stealing this personal space and creating this meta universe that they're about to do. Is not good, and so he doesn't want any part of it. So I got. I'm a proud father. Yeah, the reason I'm asking, you know, it's just uh, everything changed for for me. I mean, for me personally, I mean, and for my girlfriend, of course, too. But having a child, it's just you know, your whole mission and focus is mm. you know, <laughs> your your whole perspective changes, transform, transforms like radically. You can't even fathom. So this is why it's, it's like what kind of environment you know do we, we want to have like we want to have you know our, our daughter like grow up with with other children who have or whose parents also have like you know let's say you know ethical values you know uh understanding and and open-mindedness and 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 and, and yeah and and it's, it's full of sanity you know so. <laughs> right um as, as far as that is concerned you know um the insanity, it's just, <laughs> when we look back and we look back, let's find heritage again. Let's find lifestyle again. If they, if they stole our, I used to travel. I used, I've been around the world. I used to live a pretty fun life when I could, you know, when I wasn't working and I had time to plan, you know, we, it was international. It was fun, but you know, okay. They're trying to steal that. Well, screw you. I'm going to create my own damn lifestyle now. And you're not going to be able to deal with that. It's how my grandfather lived. He, 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 you know, he was, he came to this part of Texas in the late 1890s. Wow. And, you know, that's where he was, you know, when he was born and, you know, family was here. You know, we have a lot of, he used to drive the United States and take his family on road trips. And he knew the United States. He fought many ways in agriculture to feed this country and to state and to his community first. So we need to reassess our lifestyles while we desire what we desire. Let's take a step back and look at this opportunity that we have in front of us because we have a blueprint. It's back over here. We got to look back a little bit, but that's okay because that's some good research to understand, to really understand your family history first and how they were either wealthy, how, what they were wealthy in, was it in spirit? Was it in love? Find that find that crap out and get started on, on basically blueprinting something with an opportunity that we have in front of us with this Bitcoin protocol, which is a decentralized network that some, some people used to live in. Amazing. Yeah. Love your thought process. Yeah. Love it. Um, yeah, Ben, uh, what, what's your like... What is your whole perspective? Like, how do you how do you see this whole thing evolving in in El Salvador? Is that do you think? I mean, there is no guarantee, especially when we're talking about like politicians, even Bukele. I mean, he loves to be celebrated on Twitter. But but what's your overall take like on on, on free private cities and the transition? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's definitely a very interesting development. So I've. I can't trust any politician, not, you know, and including um, Najib from from basically from El Salvador. But he's done some really good things. Like uh, you have to give him the credit; it doesn't guarantee anything for the future. But he's done some really good things. Uh, his move with Bitcoin and his cancellation of all the vaccine requirements, basically just encouraging people, as you know, as sane. Uh, scientific advice would suggest to do sport and live a healthy lifestyle to protect themselves. I mean, this is really, you know, some some important stuff that he's done. Um, so, and in general, I would say, yeah, there's definitely a shift and a division between, you know, between certain places, like physical places where you live. Uh, the world is way more globalized now, way more like, you know, you can travel a lot more than, you know, than a hundred years ago or whatever. Uh, it's becoming a lot easier to communicate ideas now and, you know, and find people you identify with. Uh, you know, 
you could identify with people in your own community in the past. Now you can identify with you guys from, you know, from Europe, from uh, the United States, from wherever in the world. And they can find people that I agree with and that I want, you know, that um, have the same, you know, political views as me and move to, to this place and or move to a place that is, you know, that is more um, more receptive to my approach or takes takes my my stand, my political stand more. Um, so I definitely think we'll see a lot more uh, movement and into, you know, into whatever we would call free private cities or just, you know, general division in, in nations. Um, yeah, so, I, for example, I don't think that the United States Union can can hold on so much longer with, with all of this division that, that they have inside right now. I mean, it's, it's just crazy, like the level of difference between, you know, between Florida and California. It's, it's like, you know, it's just insane. I just, you know, you, you cannot really be a union with, with so many disagreements. Uh, so I don't see that holding on for, for much longer right now. Um, so I don't really think we're going into more like uh, more com communities instead of big nations uh, in that sense. Yeah, I'm totally with you on that. Yeah, really excited. I mean, to, the, just the prospect of it, the vision about it. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just too hopeful, or, or too, uh, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm I'm really optimistic, realist that uh, El, El Salvador could be one. I mean, now if 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 there is a chain reaction uh, of of other countries, smaller countries, or even I don't know, maybe, uh, he's meeting Turk uh, the Turkey's president today, so <laughs> maybe he can orange pill. Or who knows what's happening in the background? I mean, what do I know? I don't know shit. So, but mm -hmm. um, but I'm I'm hoping you know that there's sort of a exponential like incentivization, you know, there's an incentivization going on. And then all of a sudden, you know, you have a, like a, like a deflationary, like a Bitcoinized economy where everything is thriving and, you know, and technology is coming in. Uh, finally, you know, all this technology has been suppressed coming and, you know, serving this, the civilian, like, like the uh, human civilization, uh, whatever that is, because I think it's really overdue, whatever that is, you know, transportation, energy, um, and without you know going into like utopian bullshit or anything, it just I I th I think we have all the technologies already. Would it be you know a military industrial complex? But as the humanity you know it will grow eventually. I mean we all know what what are we like eight billion people? So and it's funny I was uh, like sort of a short <laughs> anecdote, uh, but you probably know that Texas Slim. It's like in a lot of documentaries they say oh the whole population of the Earth could fit into the size of Texas or something like that. Is that true? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Texas is big. I mean, just try to drive it, right? Yeah, it's, I find it funny. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's large. Uh, I drive where I am. I in This will put it in perspective. I can drive to Austin, and it's 500 miles. It's eight hours, and that's not much of a drive in Texas. If I, if I drove from the top of Texas all the way down to the tip of Texas, it would take, I don't know, 17 hours or something like that. It just wow. depends. And then actually Texas is, is exactly almost a little bit. It's actually a little bit wider than it is from top to bottom. So it's it's a big state. It's got a lot of different regions and stuff. There's a lot of land here. And, you know, that's promising in Texas. And so you know, there's there's plenty of opportunity. And, you know, Ben really brings up a lot of good points as far as the union, as far as everything. And to, and to try to worry about that on the macro level, it is daunting after a while. And that's what we all have to fight against, you know. And so that's one of the reasons I ended up in a, back in a small town, Texas, so I could get a different perspective than what I was seeing. And it was effective for me because it brought me to where I'm doing, you know, the beef initiative. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it, it's something that I did a lifestyle change. I was heading to Thailand to ride a motorcycle before covid you know, I wasn't going to do this, but yeah, I feel obligated and I'm a responsible man. I, I like to think so there's there's a calling and I can't sit here and just say that Bitcoin is going to fix this. I have to make a plan for people to get nutrition and pure animal protein to go out there and meet their meat producers, 
shake their hands like our grandparents did. And then let's teach these ranchers that we have a new store of value. And we're going to basically put that value of that cow now in a protocol that you don't understand, but let us teach you. You teach us about pure animal protein again, and we're going to teach you about this new protocol, this thing called Bitcoin that you hear. And so once we can do that bridge and we can get people thinking and people dreaming and understand, you bring, okay, let's talk about a rancher that's been doing this for 40 to 50 years. He knows ranching okay you know what when he starts understanding bitcoin on the level that he understands that cow and that industry and the in the in in the food and the chemical companies and everything that's involved do you think that rancher is not going to have a a light go off in his head and he's going to get very interested in what we're doing this is where we are and this is what the beef initiative is going to do we're going to do a lot of enlightening that's going to have a lot of promise and people are going to get very motivated and it's going to happen. Yeah. And I'm so happy, you know, that people that you inspire people, you know, also with your work that, you know, finally people have a vision like, uh, you know, people can't even imagine. Most people can't even imagine what is possible, you know, mm-hmm. with Bitcoin, uh, especially rooted in Bitcoin. They can't even imagine. We can't even fathom. We can't even imagine in a civilization that is thriving, that you have abundance. You know, this is what Jeff Booth constantly talking about, you know. Yeah. The, the price of tomorrow, why deflation is the key to an abundant future. What the People can't even imagine what abundance means. It means on every level, you know, structurally, technologically, societally, you know, health-wise, nutritionally, it's everything. You we can have everything. It's just, I don't know, we've been so indoctrinated, so dogmatized through, the, and again, through this edu- educational system, media, the, everything else. It's just, uh, you know, people have just closed their minds and they can't even imagine. And and that's, you know, it's really sad, but but we're seeing, we're seeing for the first time, maybe, you know, the, the, the fruits of our, of our, you know, whatever we're doing, you know, me with my podcast, you with your work, with your podcast, Ben, with his, you know, clown world today, it's it's amazing, you know, what kind of people are out there, you know, with it being Bitcoin mining in, in structural things, in in teachings, in tutorials, and it's 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 mind boggling, but but it's happening, it's happening right in front of our eyes, but I'm just hoping, you know, it 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 becomes sort of accelerated, you know, there's there, I think there's as a trigger point, a tipping point, which we haven't. Uh, uh, reached yet but once that is reached it just goes i think hyperbolically would you agree <laughs> i do i mean you look at innovate i was in the software like i told you i was in startup business i went through uh adoption we had to we had to we had to create an industry back then online software whatever it is it was browsers it was it was you know the internet just didn't show up we got here for a reason and there was a lot of innovation that had to take place to get us to where we are in technology ben knows this better than anybody that probably I know. So Ben knows what I'm talking about, but with innovation, you have to have adoption. And with adoption, that takes time. You're having to relearn something. You're having to say, I'm going to change this a little bit at a time. It's frustrating. It's fr- frustrating to, you know, try to get a payment rel, you know, or some type of transactional thing, tool, software piece, whatever it is, wallet. There's a lot of things going on right now that are frustrating, but guess what? Like you said, whenever it happens, it's going to happen. And we've seen this throughout the last 20 to 30 years with technology. When it gets adopted, then there's a little thing that happens about, you know, it's called awareness about a new tool that it can be leveraged for somebody's life. Then something's going to happen. And we're there. It's just, it's frustrating for, I haven't been in the Bitcoin world nearly as long as anybody, you know, I have to play catch up, but there's people out here that have been waiting a long time and they've got us here and they're going to get us, you know, to the next level. It's happening. I think 2022 is going to be a very fun year to watch. (laughs) You know, I think that we're going to have some pretty cool things that happen. Uh Yeah. Ben, uh, are you still here? We can't see you. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. You see yeah, we me? can't see you. Yeah, maybe something's wrong with the video or the internet. Or, uh, so, Ben, um, any final thoughts? I'm going to wrap this up. I don't want to take up too much time, but I really, I'm really super grateful. Appreciate your your work and everything you've been doing. Every anything on the horizon uh, bo- to both of you coming up, like articles or, or uh, any anything? Yeah. So I'm I'm definitely going to continue with with the clown world on Twitter and on Substack. Um, also a bit Telegram channel, but uh, I mainly do. I will definitely continue with this Twitter. I hope to get to do more writing, but we'll see if, if I have enough time for that. 
And uh, just just uh, for the listeners or the new ones, uh, where can people find you again? It's underscore Ben Kaufman and, and... yeah. So mm-hmm. so my Twitter is underscore Ben Kaufman. It's underscore B E N K A U F M A N, and the Clown World handle is C W T underscore News. And your articles, right? I mean, you're still writing mm-hmm. on Substack, or, or yeah. Yeah, so you can you can find it at clownworld.today. Awesome. All right, Texas Slim Modern T Man uh, is it yes. your Twitter handle, right? <laughs> yeah, in we've got some some really cool stuff coming up in 2022. We're gonna have right now we're gonna have four uh, beef initiative conferences across the United States, and so we're gonna have a lot of education from Bitcoin to beef to medical, uh, educational, and so those those cities are about to be announced here pretty soon. Um, we're gonna release our platform here pretty quick. We're getting those payment reels where you can buy beef with bitcoin that's going to happen uh we've had some really good negotiations lately so that's about to happen uh we're gonna hopefully you know we're gonna keep on plugging forward we're gonna have a newsletter our platform is going to be crowdsourced information on hey what are you doing as a rancher come tell us your story and we'll tell you about some bitcoin and so i'll be this whole year i'm i'm going to be driving around texas in the united states and i'm talking to ranchers i've already had invitations to at least 30 ranchers and so i'm going to be pretty busy but we're going to kind of orchestrate this and this year is going to be a production of education and awareness and let's let's plan for the next 36 months where we're going to have this new decentralized food we don't know how it's going to be how big it's going to be but we're moving in that direction and we're going to bring in a lot of different discussions and a lot of experts that are kind of getting into the bitcoin and the beef space so there's a lot going on uh right now you can just reach me at at modern t man like you said and then our um we'll have a new newsletter within the beef initiative platform that we'll release out here pretty soon but uh, right now after joe rogan if you just do a search on hashtag food intelligence you're going to find everything there amazing so Super. thank you adam and thank you joe <laughs> <laughs> no these, these these people are great i mean it just you know it's so important that uh, people who have the you know the, the power to reach so many people I mean, tens of and tens of millions of people. It's it's it's. Uh, I think it's overdue uh, that because uh, it's essential. It's super essential and it's super effective, and people need to be educated. They're just you know, pe- most people just don't have a clue about you know. They they don't you know. It it takes time. Sometimes you just need to plant a seed, and then it takes time. You know, from my own experience, you can't just you know. Uh, orange pill someone or or I don't know or convince uh, you know it just just doesn't make sense you can you can plan to see if the people are open-minded then they open up but hey anyway thank you so much again both of you Texas Slim Ben um, any final thoughts or uh, uh, otherwise thank you so much you guys be strong Ben good to see you hey thank you sir for having me on and let's uh let's go toe-to-toe with this stuff and let's create some new new innovation and some new lifestyles and definitely some, yeah mm-hmm. let's do and it i hope to see you soon i mean sometime you know in the new future who knows maybe maybe we'll come to texas i don't know man <laughs> if you come, come to texas somewhere. i'll show you around okay no, that's we'll, amazing. We'll go out, i'll take you out mm-hmm. to a ranch how's that oh my god i can't wait you know that the, the steak <laughs> right let's do it <laughs> okay guys have a yeah, great thanks time thanks a lot for having to... us um yeah <laughs> all right uh so that was amazing talk with um ben kaufman and texas slim uh follow them on twitter it's underscore ben kaufman and modern t man gonna put everything in show notes and yeah and if you're new if you're total noob again get yourself the best way would be you know get get yourself uh you know just a little bit of bitcoin the the best uh, way would be via at Staco, that's my experience uh it's not non-kyc you can you know even redeem it uh with any you know uh, popular mobile lightning wallet with lightning so you have like you know almost zero fees and and you know and then just withdraw it to, uh, to your harder wallet and you know you have all the links you have all the discount codes in my show notes uh, would it be Bitbox by uh, Shift Crypto? You know the Swift. Uh, then the best one, you know, most paranoid one is uh, a Cold Card by CoinKite. You have, uh, and then you have, of course, uh, Keys- Keystone. Uh, 
uh, uh, yeah, and uh, so it's all the discount codes is there. Please follow me on Twitter, subscribe to my YouTube channel and podcast platforms. Share this video with your friends and family, neighbors, and yeah, take care. And I'm the host, Kevin Devani of the Kevin Devani Connection Show. I'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.